Welcome to the next chapter of this course. So we are now in mathematics as a language. This is the first part of this series. So first, let's have, let's look at this problem first. If you look at this equation, what is the pattern in the given set of equations? Okay, I'll give you a, ta a minute or two to think about your answers, or if you want, you can pause this video. What do you think is the pattern here? Alright, so assuming that you already paused your video, let's look at the first the first equation you have 7 plus 3 and then you have 4 here so what happened this is 7 minus 3 and then for this one the second number is 7 plus 3 and then lastly it's 7 times 3 right so let's see if that is the pattern for everything so for the first one 8 minus 3 correct and then 8 plus 3 and then 8 times 3, right? So you can verify that for everything here, um, for all the numbers here, that is the pattern. Let's just look at, take a look at the last one. So 17 minus 8 is 9. 17 plus 8 is 25. And lastly, 17 times 8, 17 plus 8 is 25, and then 17 times 8 is equal to 136. Now that um, your brains are all warmed up, um, what I just want to show you is that many results in mathematics came about as a generalization of patterns and shapes. Studying patterns allow us to observe, hypothesize, discover, and create. So take note that the way of doing mathematics now has evolved from just performing calculations to making deductions from patterns, testing conjectures, and estimating results. So now that you're already in college, so math is just no longer like what you're doing in um, probably in grade school where you just have to multiply um, big numbers. It's just a series of calculations, right? So of course, mathematics um, allow us to think analytically. So, um, all these aspects tell us that um, we have to, and in order to progress with the help of mathematics, we need to get a good grasp, a good grasp of the mathematical language. Okay, first, what is a language? A language is a systematic means of communicating by the use of sound or conventional symbols. So, as you can see there, you also have symbols. It is a code. It is the code we all use to express ourselves and communicate with others. Okay, what are the components of a language? So, for example, in the English language, we have vocabulary of symbols or words, grammar or rules of how these symbols are used, community of people who use and understand these symbols, and the range of meanings that can be communicated with these symbols. So for the English language, what are the symbols that we have? We have English letters. For vowels and constant, we also have vowels and constants. And then we have words, phrases, and sentences. What are the mathematical counterpart of those? So the symbols in math would be the um, our variables or the English letters and some Arabic numerals. The vowels and consonants will be, um, and also the, the variables and constants, okay? The vow, um, the words, the words in the English language, the counterpart in math would be the terms. For the phrases, we have algebraic expressions, and the counterpart of sentences would be mathematical statements like equations, inequalities, and so on. Okay, we will, as, as I have mentioned a while ago, we will be talking about propositional calculus. Now, you might be um, distressed about this word calculus. You might have that expression. What? We're going to study calculus. I did not sign up for this. So, it's okay. Take note the term
term calculus here just means that we have a um, it's a particular method or system of calculation or reasoning. Okay. First, let us start with the definition of proposition. What is a proposition? A proposition is a complete declarative sentence. So let me just um, emphasize that it must be a declarative sentence. So automatically, if it's not a declarative sentence, it's not a proposition. But of course, not all declarative sentences are propositions. A proposition is either true or false, but not both. What do we mean by the statement that it cannot be both? No? So for example, let's, let's look at some examples of proposition. Alright, so an example would be Manila is the capital of the Philippines. We know that that is true. 1 plus 1 equals 2, that is true. 2 plus 2 equals 5, that is false. So, these are all examples of propositions. What would be non-examples of propositions? For instance, we have, wow! It's not a proposition simply because it's not a declarative sentence, right? What about, um, um, let's say, Miss Universe 2020 is beautiful. It's a declarative sentence, right? But is it true or false? I guess most of you would say that this is true. But take note that for this particular example, there are cultures um, that have different um, standards of beauty. So for one person, Probably Miss Universe 2020, I don't know who she is. she is. She might be beautiful for him or her. But for another person, she might not be beautiful. So if in that's the case, this is, this is not true. We cannot really say as a matter of fact that this is true. We cannot also say that it is false. So it's some sort of it depends, correct? So statements wherein it depends, it's not a proposition. So these are not... propositions. Okay, so is it time already? Is this a proposition? Of course, the answer is no. There's no question here, you know. Are these propositions? So is it time already? No, of course, because it is not a declarative sentence. Pay attention to this. It is it is a command, no? So it's not declarative also. X plus 1 equals 2. There you go. This is also not a proposition. Why? Because we do not know the value of X, right? So if X is equal to 1, then the statement is true, right? But if X is any number which is not equal to 1, the statement would be false. So see, this is an example wherein it depends, right? Just like in our previous example. So if it's, if you do not know, if you cannot say that it's true or false, it can be true or sometimes false, that is not a proposition. Okay, so what do we call those true or false? Okay, we say that those are the truth values of a proposition. So the truth values are either, of course, true or false. Okay, now um, we will discuss propositional connectives. What are propositional connectives? So just like with numbers. With numbers, you can join them, right, using operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, right? If you have a number, you add two, the two numbers, if you, sorry, I'm sorry. If you have two numbers, you combine them using the operation of addition. You yield another number, correct? Or if you multiply two numbers, you get another number as well. So also for propositions, we can have some sort of operations, okay, with them. So yeah, it's, it's, they are really operations. So what happens here is that you combine two propositions using this propositional connectives, and the answer would be another proposition okay and the value the truth value 
of this um, of this proposition, the resulting proposition, will depend on the truth values. It will depend on the truth values of the two original propositions. Okay. Um, take note that the combinations of propositions using propositional connectives are called compound proposition. So just like with sentences, when you combine two sentences, right, you have compound sentences. Alright, so here is just an overview of the propositional connectives that we would be discussing. We have conjunction, disjunction, exclusive or implication, biconditional, and the negation. Okay, now note that if propositions have their truth values, what is the truth value of a compound proposition? Earlier, I mentioned that the resulting proposition um, of two propositions connected by a propositional um, connective is a proposition, right? So therefore, it's either true or false. And the truth value would depend on the um, or two original propositions. Okay, so let's discuss. Let's start first with the negation. The negation of a proposition is just the parang opposite. No? The proposition, this is read as not P, or sometimes we read this as the negation of P. It is true whenever P is false. So this would be the truth value. Take note that for P, there are only two possibilities. Either it is either true or false. If P is true, of course, its negation would be false. And if it is false, its negation would be true. Simple, right? For example, the proposition is, it will rain today. What would be the negation of this sentence? I'll just refer to it as sentence. Ha? What is the negation of this sentence? Of course, it will not rain today. Another example Shelby is hardworking. So the negation of the sentence is Shelby is not hardworking. And lastly, you will pass this course. I, I, I am 100% sure that you will all pass this course. The negation of that sentence would be you will not pass this course. Okay, let's, so we just finished conjunction. Let's now go to the next um, um, connective. We have the conjunction and. So this is the symbol for and. All right. P and Q is true whenever, take note that both P and Q must be true. All right. This is the truth table of um, P and Q. So these are the four possibilities for P and Q, okay? So, P is either true or false, right? Take note that what happens there. For P, it's either true or false, but for Q, right, it's either true or false. So, it's like actually, so that's why you have that. Okay, now, let's look at the Okay, this one. As you can notice, it is only true whenever both P and Q are true. For the rest of the values, it's always false. Okay, remember that. P and Q is true whenever both P and Q must be, whenever both statements are true. Okay. Um, Actually, I already answered this question, right? Why are there four rows in the truth table? Anyway, before we, we go to that question deeper, let me just give an example of a statement. For example, I say um, July, um, July 20, 2020 is a Monday. And then, um, Dr. Song Song is a uh, male. Okay, let's just say that one. And then I connect this with the connector end. Okay, what would be the truth value 
of this sentence is this true or false the answer here is this is false right because although the first part the first sentence is true but the second sentence is the second component is false so that's why the entire thing is false okay let's now go to this question why are there four rows in the truth table um i showed this a while ago right i just made it bigger so for p we have two possibilities true false and then for q for this part q is either true or false and then also for this one q is either true or false so what will happen we have four branches correct correct so there you go so this is where p is true q is true so you get this first row this one this next branch true p is true q is false so you get this row right this one p is false q is true you get the third row and lastly p and q are both false all right um, let's take a look at more examples. April is beautiful. Dominic is strong. Okay, we don't know the truth values of P and Q, but what would be the statement P and Q? It is April is beautiful and Dominic is strong. Next, the stock exchange is down. The stock exchange will continue to decrease. So when we combine them with the connector and the stock exchange is down and it will continue to decrease. Let us now go to the next connector, this junction OR. Uh, this is the symbol for OR. The, the, the proposition P or Q is true whenever at least one. You only need at least one of them to be true. Remember, for AND, for AND both must be true. For it to be true for p or q you only need at least one okay so this is now the truth table of p or q as you can see here i still have this values right p and q for p or q everything is true except for the last row because none of p nor q are true okay so remember remember we will this is important for p or q if you get at least one to be true automatically the entire statement is already true if it's connected by or okay examples this lesson is interesting q the lesson is easy what is the statement P or Q? This lesson is interesting or it is easy. Next, I want to take a diet. That's S. T, the food is irresistible. What is now the statement S or T? I want to take a diet or the food is irresistible. Okay. Um, next, we have the exclusive or the disjunction exclusive or take note it's just not or okay that the symbol here is different so how do you read this p or q but not both it is true whenever take note exactly one of p and q is true remember what is the difference with with the or like that for that you, um, it is true whenever at least one. At least one. Okay, meaning to say, pedding one, pedding two, two of them. Right? So that means, if you take a look at the, the truth table, look at this. Um, for the first row, it is false because you have both of them are true. For it to be true, you need exactly one to be true for this it is true because you have only one t you have only one t okay 
And this one, of course, it's false because both of them are false. Remember, you need exactly, you need exactly 1t. Let me just write the truth table if it's or. What's the difference, class? For or like that, this row would be true, correct? This is true, this is true, this is false. So this row here, the first row is the difference, all right? Next, let's look at implications or conditionals. This is read if P then Q. The proposition if P then Q is always true. So remember, for the other um, uh, um, connect connectives that we discussed, we're always um, telling you when it when when is it true, right? We're just giving you the um, conditions for it to be true. But for this um, implication, it is always true, except there is only one case wherein it will be false. It will be false when P is true and Q is false. Okay, now take note, for, for implications, you call this, I don't want you to think of it as P, Q, something like, because P and Q, they're just, part, they're just, you know, letters. They can be anything, okay? So what I want you to do, okay, so the first part that appears there, that is called the hypothesis, and the second part is called the conclusion. I want to show you why, um, remember, it is false only when the premise or the hypothesis, let's call that the hypothesis, when the hypothesis is true, but the conclusion is false. It will be false there. Okay, I want to show you an example. For instance, um, let's say if you get a 4 in GEMAT MW, I will give you, for example, I'm your mom. I will give you a new cell phone. Okay, let's say she promised you that. Okay, if you get a 4 in gem at MW, I will give you a new cell phone. Now, suppose that you got a 4, right? And then she gave you a new cell phone. So this part here is true. Okay. When you get mad at her, no, right? You're still happy. happy. Next. Suppose um, you did not get a four. So this part here is false. You did not get a four. But your mom saw your effort. So she still gave you a new cell phone. Will you be happy? Of course, you will be dupe, super duper happy, right? Because even if you did not meet the condition, so that's a grin, okay? Even if you did not meet the condition, she just, she still gave you a new cell phone, all right? Now, suppose, again, you did not get a, you did not get a four, and of course, she did not give you a new cell phone. So this is false. Will you be mad at her? Do you have the right to be mad at her? Of course not. You should not be mad at that. But you're not happy because you did not get a new cell phone. Right? But the point is, you have no right to be mad. When will you be mad at her? When, when you got a 4, but she did not give you a new cell phone. So this part here, the hypothesis is true. You met the condition, right? The hypothesis is true, but the conclusion was false. That is the only time that You can be mad at her, right? So, 
the, the reason why I, I, I showed this to you, so that because when I was your age, I was always thinking, hmm, why is it that special that if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false, then it will only be the case when the the entire implication would be false, right? So if, if something like this happens, if the, the hypothesis is true, but the conclusion is false, that would make the person who said the statement a liar, right? Um, we will go back to the to the truth table. Anyway, these are the many names of if, p, then, q. So as you can see, there are a lot. Okay. So take note that okay, if 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 the statement is starting with if, the 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 part that appears there would be your hypothesis, and then the second part would be the conclusion. Also, it can be said that p is sufficient for q. Take note that. This one, Q, if, P, bamababaligtad na siya. It will be reversed. Because after the word if, yung after the word if, that will be always your premise. Ito rin, Q, when, P. When is the same as if, right? So this is your premise. A necessary condition for P is Q. Actually, ito yung medyo nakakalito. This two. Necessary and itong sufficient condition. So even for me, eh, Actually, you don't have to memorize this. Whenever I see this, I just go back to the table. And then this one, the whenever, um, ano, Q whenever P is almost the same as Q when P, right? It's actually the same. And this one, Q is necessarily Q follows from P. So remember, whenever you have necessarily follows, then that would mean na mare reverse. Okay? So you start with this part. That's the premise, and this is the conclusion. Okay? Anyway, um, this one lang, uh, I'm just giving you the truth table for the, for the implication if P then Q. And then this is the part that I, I told you na this is the only row wherein you will get a false for if P then Q. When the premise is true, but the conclusion is false. And take note also, it's worth mentioning also that automatically, if the premise is false, it doesn't matter if the conclusion is true or false. Automatic, the sentence would be true. Okay. For example, um, let's say I have... Um, let's say Duterte is not if is not the president of the Philippines. That's my premise. Then. Duterte is not the president of the Philippines. Then, um, I am going to run for vice president, let's say. If Duterte is not the president of the Philippines, I am going to run for vice president. Now, take note that the first part, this one, this is false, right? It is not true that Duterte is not the president of the Philippines because he actually is. So it doesn't matter what the truth value of the conclusion, right? This makes, so this one, it doesn't matter, okay, whether it's true or false. But the point is this entire statement is true. Understand? Okay. Let's have some examples. P, your score in the long test is at least 85%. Q, your teacher will buy you some pizza. The implication if P, then Q is, if your score in the long test is at least 85%, then your teacher will buy you some pizza. Anyway, um, let us now look at some related implications. So we started with this one, the implication 
if P then Q, remember this is the hypothesis and this is the conclusion. We have three related implications. The first one is the converse. What happens with the converse? For the converse, what happens lang is that the hypothesis and the conclusions got interchange, right? Interchange the premise and conclusion. For the inverse, what happens for the inverse? So what happens is you just negate negate both premise and conclusion, right? For the contrapositive, the contrapositive is actually what? The contrapositive, if you will look at this, what happens to this? Atong relation niya with this one. The contrapositive, what happened? The, the, it's the converse of the inverse, right? So what happened? It's like you negated, parang you get the inverse first, right? You negate both of this. But then, you switch. Understand? And then you switch. That is the, that is the contrapositive. So, meaning to say, remember, for, to get the contrapositive, um, the new, so, wait, let, let me just write that again. P, then Q. So, to get the contrapositive, the new premise is the negation of the conclusion. And the new hypothesis, sorry, ah, I'm, I'm always referring to hypothesis as premise. Same lang din yan. Again, the new premise is the negation of the original conclusion. And the new conclusion is the negation of the original premise. Maybe I should write this. That, like that. Understand? Okay, so it's very important that you memorize contrapositive by heart, how to form the contrapositive. Okay, I will show you later why it's very important. Example, if it is raining hard today, classes would be suspended. Of course, now during the pandemic, ano, even if it's raining very hard, wala nang suspension of classes because we are doing online. So anyway, so suppose that we are in the, um, in the old normal, no, those days when... This is true. If it is raining very hard today, classes will be suspended. So the, if we write it in this way, the premise is it's raining very hard and the conclusion is classes will be suspended. So take note, class, that it's important that if you're given a sentence like this, you should be able to know which one is the premise and which one is the conclusion. Okay. Now, what would be, so this is the original, the, the statement that we had earlier, okay? It's raining very hard, then classes will be suspended. How do you form the converse? You just interchange the um, hypothesis in the conclusion. So that's why classes are, actually, let's turn this to, if classes are suspended, then it must be raining very hard. That is the converse of that statement. Understand? So, for example, another example, um, let's say if I if um, if I get bored then I will go to the mall. What is the converse of that statement? If I go to the mall, then I got bored, right? Right? Okay. Next, let's look at the inverse. So remember, how do you form the inverse of the original statement? You just get the negation. This is at the wiggle part. Sometimes I'm using this, but most of the time I'm using this. 
for the negation. So the inverse would be if it's not raining very hard, then classes are not suspended. And lastly, we have the contapositive. So how do you form the contapositive? The, the new premise is the negation, right? The negation of the original conclusion and the new conclusion is the negation of the original um, hypothesis. Understand? Okay. Um, let's now go to biconditionals. So the, we will we will go back to um, contrapositive later when we talk about tautologies. Okay. For now, we'll go to biconditionals. What are biconditionals? Um, it's a it's read as P if and only if Q. It is true whenever they have the same truth values. So if you look at the truth table here, it will only be true if they are they have the same truth values. Here it's true because both P and Q are true. It is true here because they both have the same truth value here, F. For the rest, it will be false. Okay, dapat, remember that. They must have the, it will be true if they have the same truth values. Okay. Um, let's just... Um, I have sentences here. You just give me what would be the equivalent um, sentences. Okay, so for example, this one. The statement P is I am a Lasallian. Statement Q is I love mathematics. What would be the proposition P or Q? It's I am a Lasallian or I love mathematics, correct? Not P and Q. Maybe I should just write it here because I do not have space. Not P and Q, what is that? I am not a Lasallian and I love mathematics. Okay? What about not Q? Of course, that statement is, I do not love mathematics. The statement, if P, then Q, is, if I am a Lasallian, then I love mathematics. I wonder if this proposition is true or false in your case. <laughs> okay, um, and lastly we have, let me just write it here, P if and only if Q. So, I am a Lasallian if and only if I love mathematics. When I was in high school, I thought the word if and only if was some sort of arte lang to give emphasis. No? Um, I was already in college when I learned that it's not true pala. Okay? So, remember that whenever you have the statement if and only if, that means that if one is true, the other one must also be true. For example, if you recall this statement, um, in geometry, an, a triangle is equilateral if and only if it is equiangular. No? So remember, for a triangle, if it is equilateral, automatically, it is also equiangular. So, meaning to say they are the same lang, no? They are basically the same 
sentence. We will again I will discuss more of that when we go to tautologies. Okay. Now, how can you determine so in, in the examples that I gave you, um for all of them we just had two propositions P and Q and then we were combining them. What if we have already more than two variables? How can you determine the number of rows in a truth table? Now the answer is simple. If you just follow the the the, the tree that I showed you, you will be able to determine the number of rows. Take note that the number of rows, if you have n propositions, the number of rows would be 2 raised to n. For example, the back here, you have only one proposition, right? So that's why the number of rows is 2 raised to 1. Here you have two propositions, p and q. So that's why the number of rows is 2 raised to 2. So meaning to say, if you have three propositions and then you are combining them using connectors or connectives, how many rows would you expect? You will get 2 raised to 3 or 8 rows. Okay? So this is a tip in constructing the table. So what, what do the white and the green mean? So what this means, for example, the, the white, it will be true white. And then F, that would be the green. So meaning to say, here, if I have, um, um, the, in this case, I have four columns. So I have P, Q, R, S, correct? So I have four propositions. So that means how many rows do we expect to raise to four or 16? So as you can see here, we have 16, right? 8 here and then 8 here. So what you do for the first column, you divide it into 2. The first half, everything would be true. And the second half here, for the first half, everything is true because that's represented by white. And then for the second half, everything would be false, okay? And then next, Ito, and then you get the half again. For this one, get the half of 8. So that's why. Oops, actually this one should be part of the... Um, wait, I'll just erase it. Let me just erase because that's part of the number of rows. I should write my propositions on top. So this is for P, Q... R, S. Okay, and then T, T, right? And then another half, wait, this is true. True, true. And then green is false. And then another true again. Then repeat the process. And then like that, get half of four, so you get two first, two rows, um, true, and so on and so forth. Okay, are you able to see the pattern? Until in the end, you should get true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Okay. Um, let's make let's make uh, an, uh, the truth table for if P then Q and R. Now take note. Suppose this for this one, I already gave the columns. Ano? Pero suppose. You just have, I just gave you, if construct the truth table for if P, then Q, and R, okay? So, for example, you were not given the columns, no? So, I know that, okay, I need my, I have three letters appearing there, or the proposition. So, you have your columns for P, Q, and R. And then, what will you do? You make a column for, for this one. You have to, con because this is, you're, con you're joining these two statements, right? Correct? So that's why you have to make a column for if P, then Q. And lastly, I already have a column for R and then the whole thing now. You can now make this column. Okay, so let's proceed. Let us now construct the truth table. True, true, true. False. 
true true false false true false you can also join me no in a piece of paper you can also do it and then try to pause the video and then watch later if your answers are the same as mine okay so first for this for this um, column if p then q remember so that means we are looking at the what are the components you are looking at these two columns right if p then q remember it is always true except when the premise is true but the conclusion is false and it occurs here right that's the only case wherein the premise is true but the conclusion is false so that means dito lang siya false and then for the rest it is true okay next for our last column we are looking at this one we are joining these two parts if p then q and r so that means we will look at this column this is the first component right and the second component is r so this one remember for end it's commutative it doesn't matter which one will come first right and also for or maybe we will talk about that later no? Pero anyway so remember that for end when it will be true dapat both are true so when are they both true so for the first row they're both true here no here here they're both true so this is true here they're false one is false one is true so the statement is false and then here both of them are true and then lastly you get false here so that is the that's how you construct the truth table of this proposition all right so let us now construct the truth table for not p or q and r all right what are the columns that we need for this um, if we take a look at this, this is you're, you're joining two statements, not P or Q, and the other one is R. So that means I need a column for not P or Q. I already have a column for R. However, before I can make a column for not P or Q, I need a column for, this is you're joining not P and then Q. So I need a column also for not P. I already have Q, right? So let me now write those. I need not P to get not P or Q. And lastly, what I want is not P or Q and R. Okay? So we're now ready to fill in our table. So first half is true, false, and then next half. And then true false alternate okay for not p we just look at the column for p the opposite of that so we get for false and then for true okay now we have not p or q so or so we are looking at the components this column not p or q so what is the truth when 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 is the statement or again true we need at least one to be true correct so for this one what is it true or false you have one true q is true so this is true and then this is true for this one none of them are true right so this is false for here 
this is since not p one component is already true so that makes the entire thing true already and lastly not p or q and then r so we will look at that what are the components not p or q and then the state the com column r okay so we want it maybe i should highlight um, highlight okay, just so that it will be easy for you to look at which two columns we are um doing okay so end remember when is they are connected by end so therefore they must be both true to become for the entire sentence to be true so therefore here for the first row they're both true here false false none of them are true here false here they're both true false here they are both true and here yeah so this is now the truth table for this proposition is that clear okay let's now go to tautologies contradiction and contingency a compound proposition that is always true is said to be a tautology always true if it's always false it's a contradiction and if it is sometimes true or sometimes false it's called a contingency so actually the truth the, for the truth for the two truth tables that we constructed a while ago what are they they are both contingencies right because we have rows wherein it is true and then we are we also have rows wherein it is false so i will give you an example of a contradiction in a tautology so this is a contradiction the proposition p and not p is a contradiction because as you can see for its column the corresponding column for p and not p it is always false a tautology naman would be p or not p correct okay because since always one of them would be true right so in either case both rows would be true so this is an example of a tautology because all the truth values for that particular column are true okay so a contingency this one no? so we have um p implies q that's a contingency not p or q because sometimes it's true sometimes it's false no okay it's a contingency all right so let's verify if this implication is a ah, uh, if yeah if so we're not sure if it is a tautology okay so i already just have two propositions here p or q so that's why we have four um rows here um what are the columns that we need first we need okay let's look at this right this is actually an implication of this and this okay so but for this one okay so definitely we need a column for for the last one not p and p or q implies q okay but if we take a look at this one what do we need we need a column that's you're joining this and this so we need a column for not and for p or q right that's it so we just need um how many columns is that we need i wait by the way we also need of course the not p i forgot of course the not p and p or q right so first we have not p not p P or Q, not P and P or Q, and let's just call this whole thing star. Okay, the last one. 
star. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so let's proceed. Not P. So the negation of P. So false, false, true, true. P or Q. So we just need at least one to be true. So here it is false because none of them are uh, is true. Next we get, we now look at this column, not P, and and so for and for it to be true we should have both statements to be true and it can only be ito lang yun true for the rest it's false and lastly for our star this is the premise this is our premise this thing this is the premise, and the conclusion is Q, right? When is a statement, when is an implication false? We only look at the row where it is false when the premise is true, but the conclusion is false. Where does, does, do you have that? No, we don't have, right? If you look at this, there is only one row wherein it is true, the premise, but the conclusion there is true. So, for everything, that's true. So, that's why this is an example of a tautology. Because the last, that column, this is now a tautology. Alright? Next, we will now go to... Um, logical equivalences. Compound propositions that have the same that have the same truth values in all possible cases are called logically equivalent. Meaning to say, take note of that, that they always have the same truth values. Whatever happens, they always have the same truth values. Now, the compound propositions, another definition of logically equivalent statements is that if you form this statement, P if and only if Q is a tautology. Okay? So, what, what that means is that, for example, I have a proposition here, whatever, star, and then another proposition, kunwari. In the end, in the end, they always have the same values. True, true, false, true. Let's, let's just say, yeah, it's like that. So, they have the same, right? They have the same, <coughs> excuse me, they have the same, <coughs> they have the same um, truth, truth tables. Now, if I form, if that's the case, what will happen if I form the biconditional star if and only if heart? Remember, when is this true, the biconditional? It is true whenever they have true siya kapag they, always, kapag they have the same truth values. And we already know that they always have the same truth value. So that's why this biconditional is always true. So that's why, since it is always true, that statement is a tautology. Okay? Okay, let's look at this one. Is this, are the statements P implies Q and not P or Q logically equivalent? Um, I will leave it to you as an exercise because I already spent a lot of time um, doing, what's this, um, truth tables. But yes, they are logically um, equivalent. Alright? So that's um, seat work. <laughs> Try it for yourselves. Okay. Um, is I will no longer do that. All right. What about this? Not P and not Q and the statement. Not negation of P or Q. Okay. Sige na nga. I will do it 
what are we checking again? We are checking if the statements not P or not Q is logically equivalent with the negation of P or Q. Okay, so true, true, false, false. Not P. Not Q. Not P and not Q. So I'm looking at these two columns. So and when it will be true if both of them are true. False, 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 true. Okay, for this one, not P. May, I, I, we, need, we need this first, right? P or Q. For P or Q, when is it true? We need at least one. So I'm looking at this column. We need one of them to be true. And lastly, this one. So we have the negation of this column. False, 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 true. See, if you look at these columns over here, they are the same. Same. So therefore, they are logically equivalent. Okay? Now, take note, ito, ito talaga kayo na. Show that an implication is logically equivalent to its contrapositive, but not to its inverse and converse. Um, again, I already spent a lot of time in constructing truth tables, so I will leave the truth tables to you. But just to show you, no, um, in, in sentence form, sort of, just to give you an example, to show you the logical equivalence of a statement and its contrapositive is this. For example, if, um, if I am... If I am favorite ko si Duterte, no, well, I just can't, hindi, hindi ko naman siya favorite, pero I just can't think of any example right now. If I am Duterte, then I am a Filipino. Okay, this is my sentence, okay? Let's form its inverse, its converse, and its contrapositive, Okay? What is the inverse? How do you form the inverse? You just form the, you just negate both prim, both hypothesis and conclusion. If I am not Duterte, then I am not a Filipino. The converse, you just switch the premise and the conclusion. If I am a Filipino, then I am Duterte. What is the contrapositive? You negate the conclusion, I am not a Filipino, but and negate the friends, not Duterte. Okay, let's look at the truth values. Let's just look at the original statement. If I am Duterte, then I am a Filipino. Is this statement true or false? Of course, this is true. If you are Duterte, you are, you must be a Filipino, right? Now, let's look at the inverse. If I am not Duterte, then I am not a Filipino. Is that statement true or false? That statement is false, right? Because we are all not Duterte, but we are all Filipinos, correct? Next, converse. If I am a Filipino, then I am Duterte. Definitely false because we are all Filipinos, but we are not Duterte. But if you look at this, if I am not a Filipino, then I cannot be Duterte. Right? It's true. So as you can see, these two statements, they have the same truth values because they are logically equivalent. So, remember when you say that two statements are logically equivalent, kumbaga, they're just the same. They are basically the same sentence. You just rephrased it. Okay? So, 
um, let's look at this, mga um, logical logical equivalent. So, we have this loss. So, what is this saying? Um, what T here stands for a tautology. T here stands for a tautology. And F stands for a contradiction. Kaya niya lang ginawang F kasi di ba we know that for a contradiction, it is always false. And for a tautology, it is always True. So, identity loss. What is this saying? If you have a proposition, you combine it with a tautology. P and a tautology is equivalent to P, to the proposition itself. Again, I will leave the construction of tables to show you that what, what we mean by this, actually this, this symbol also, it's saying that, right? This is saying that P and T is the same, is logically equivalent to P. Okay? So, yung basa natin dito, they are just the same, are logically equivalent. So, remember, if you, if you do P and T, that's the same as P. If you join uh, uh, using OR, if you join a contradiction using OR with a proposition, you get the sample, and that's why it's called the identity loss. But for the domination loss, P or T is equivalent to T or a tautology. It's always true. And then P and F, it's always a tautology. So meaning to say, a tautology, you combine it with end from a proposition, you get an uh, the entire thing is an is a um, I, I mean contradiction. If you have a contradiction, you join it. If you have a contradiction, you join it with another proposition using end. It's the same lang as the contradiction. It is again a contradiction. Um, just to show you, no, maybe I'll just show one example. For instance, I have P. This one. This, the, I show what I want to show that P or F is the same as P. Uh, we need the truth table for P. So T, T, correct? P, uh, T and F, I'm sorry. F, F. F is always false, correct? So or. So this one, we have, this is true, this one is false. So as you can see, this is the same as, as this one. Correct? Okay, and then you can try the others. Next, we have the... Um, item potent loss. So if you have, if you have a proposition and again the same proposition, that's the same lang as P and so on. No? And then double negation, the negation of a negation is just equal to the original proposition itself. So it's like the negative of negative of a number is just the number itself. Next, commutative loss. This is what I was telling you a while ago, commutative loss, that if you have and and or, it's just the same if you invert them, right? The ordering. The order does not matter. Okay? And then for the associative loss, so it's like, it's like addition and multiplication also. So, meaning to say, if all of them, see, all of them are end, that means the the parenthesis does, um, this no longer matter. So it's like, for instance, you have P plus Q. Maybe I should not use P because I want to show you that I'm, I'm looking at numbers. Let's change that. Uh, we have if A plus B plus C, this is the same as, so that you can see yung similarities niya with real numbers. A plus B plus C, right? This is associative law also, right? 
So again, what this is saying is that if all of them same, no, the parenthesis does not really matter na. Oh, so here, pag lahat sila or, then the, you no longer need the parenthesis. So that's why you can just write it as P or Q or R. There will be no confusion because regardless of where you start, you still get the same answer. Okay? Next, distributive law. So, what's happening naman with distributive law? So, it's like multiplication outside and then addition, no? So, what happens, diba, if you have A times B plus C? If these are real numbers, you have AB plus AC. So, similarly, yung operation outside, okay? So, that becomes like your multiplication. P or Q, and then this is your, right? And then distribute it here. P or R. Okay? Same thing also for this one. So, here the N gets distributed. So, that's why you have P and Q. You have P and R. And then, the operation inside the parenthesis will be the operation here. The Morgan's Law. Actually, we had this one kanina. We had this. Right? We showed that these two statements are logically equivalent because... We saw that, uh, yeah, okay, they are the same. So what what does the what does the what does the De Morgan's law says? So what it means is that to form the negation of an end statement, you simply distribute the negation, but don't forget to switch. This one switch, ha. If it's end, it becomes or. So similarly here, oh, you negate, and then the operation inside, you switch. Okay? Okay, let's look at this example. The statement P is Mark stayed up late last night singing at Music 21. Statement Q, Mark is sleepy in class. In statement form, what is the logically equivalent form of the proposition negation of P or Q? Remember that in, in the English language, we cannot say it is not the case that Mark stayed up late, late, late last night singing at Music 21 or Mark is sleepy in class, right? Because in, in the English language, um, there's no way we can, we can express the parenthesis, correct? So that's why we need to express this one without the parenthesis. And using the Morgan's law, what is that? That is simply not P or becomes N, not Q. Okay? So therefore, in statement form, what is the what is this proposition? So it is mark did not stay up late last night singing at music twenty one. And Mark is not sleepy in class. That one. Okay? So that's the end of this particular um, topic. So if you have any questions, you can address that in our online conference.